first for sex type thing, which we've been seeing a lot on Headbangers Ball, and it's I know all over all the rock stations. Now, it deals with a very serious subject. I mean, this isn't, a lot of times a singer will talk about their personal experiences and say, I'm this and that, and you're talking, speaking as like another person, right? Yeah, the, <clears throat> the songs, the lyrics to the song are actually written um, about rape and the sexual persecution of women, which is something that we feel very important about. Um, but rather than just come out and and make some kind of uh, you know typical political statement about this is how what I believe or that's what I believe, I just put myself into the um, into the mindset of uh, you know the total macho American you know uh, male attitude about uh, women and their sexuality, which I think is something that is important to be said because it doesn't often come from the point of view of a of a man. You know, it's not usually that subject isn't usually talked about. So you're speaking as a person that is unlike yourself. You're not, right. when you're singing that song, you're not speaking of your own personal experiences, you're speaking about uh, another right. character. Yeah, exactly, and hopefully, um, you know, the idea comes across and it's not misconstrued, because uh, the last thing I'd, you know, any of us would want is for uh, the point to be taken literally from. Yeah, because I mean, I, I was wondering if you, if you were worried about people that go to see Stone Temple Pilots or listen to the music that think like, oh God, is this where this guy's coming from? But that's not your personal No, and I think all. if people read, um, listen to the re rest of the stuff that's on the record and read the rest of the lyrics and everything that they would, uh, they'd come away knowing basically, you know, politically where we stand with certain kinds of, uh, issues like that. I want to find out where you guys stand on some different subjects, but right now let's play the video from you guys. And Dean, why don't you introduce it for us? Well, this is a, a little video by, uh, us, Stone Temple Pilots, called Sex Type Thing. Pilots with sex type thing, and we're here with Dean and Wyland from Stone Temple Pilots. And uh, I'm curious, a little bit of history about the band, like how you guys formed or where? Well, um, how it actually went down, my brother Robert, who plays bass, um, met Wyland at a Black Flag show in Long Beach. and uh, Fender's Ballroom. Yeah, Fender's Ballroom. And um, through talking, they, they started composing and ventured out to uh, eventually meet Eric, our drummer. And of course, uh, Robert and I kind of knew each other, being right. brothers. We were, all kinda, <laughs> we were all kind of playing in garage bands at the time, and this was like, um, when I met Robert, it seemed like it'd be a cool chance to, uh, you know, make music with someone who was from a different kind of background than, than uh, I was from musically. What are like the different backgrounds that you're from musically? I mean, uh, does everybody take different it's influences? Or, I mean, yeah, I mean, everything. I mean, you said you met at a Black Flag show or some of the influences. There's like, so much more punk. stuff than, I mean, you know, I think if you're between the ages of, you know, uh, probably 20 and 33, you're going to have, you know, you're going to be brought up some way through that. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, through that filtering system, but there's, I mean, I'd say everything from uh, a lot of the rock that came out probably in the, you know, late 60s uh, and 70s from MC5 to Zeppelin to uh, even the Carpenters. I have, I have older brothers and sisters that attributed to a lot of my early listening. You know, I, I, got, I got that whole first generation of like Hendrix and the Beatles and stuff. I didn't get like the second the second gig of it. I, I caught it right. from the start as a young, young boy. Okay, well, we're going to be back talking to these guys and also they're going to be playing something acoustic for us, which is a very cool and actually has only happened only once in the entire history of Headbangers Boss. So we're going to have Little Stone Temple Pilots unplugged, if you will. And right now, let's play a video from My Little Fun House. This is called I Want Some. And uh, the new album is called Core, and maybe you could tell me what some of the other subjects are that are touched on on the new record. Um, well, basically, uh, as far as writing the lyri lyrics for the music, um, I get a lot of ideas from, you know, from not just things that are on the outside. Well, it's, if there's something that affects me, uh, I think about, like, the, it's a, a social thing. I usually don't, you know, like in sex type thing, kind of, you know, uh, write about it as something where I'm saying, oh, this is this way and that's that way, because that's like like what politicians do, you know, they like say, well, you should think this way or that way. Um, it's pretty, all I can really do um, is really write about how a situation, whether it's a, um, a social thing or uh, a personal thing, affects me personally, so. But you don't want to be categorized as like a political type band, right? No, I think that, you know, it's, 
fair to say that, that we have a political conscience, you know, and I think there's certain things that are important to, to discuss. What are some of the subjects that you that, that are that you talk about or sing about in the album? Um, I mean everything from dysfunctional relationships to uh, basically to like rape or the you know persecution and oppression of uh, women and the society we live in. Those are pretty, you know, broad mm -hmm. spectrum. The album's pretty autobiographic. Really? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Okay, so if you listen to Core, you're gonna find out maybe a little bit more about some of these guys. Maybe. We're gonna have watch uh, Stone Temple Pilots play acoustically in just a little bit. And we're also gonna have Skin My Teeth and Megadeth tour dates, so stick around. Cool. Thank Something you. that we don't really get on the Headbangers Ball much or ever. I think we've only had it once before with somebody playing live. Is that, now that's not the way you perform the song live, right? No, it's electric. Um, it was actually written acoustically though. We performed it a couple times for uh, over over the air at uh, a couple radio stations and stuff, but uh, it's got that kind of, you know, folky campfire vibe to it that you can kind of, you know... Mm -hmm. Did you and Robert sure. ride it around the campfire? Yeah, yeah eating marshmallows. Marshmallows and s'mores. S'mores. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I, I kind of touched on the live tour that you guys are on right now. Can you elaborate on it a little bit? Um, we're going to be on the road until the 12th of December. Uh, you already mentioned that we're playing with Helmet in, in, um, in Florida, which is around where the tour ends. We're going to be going to uh, to Europe in February to do some shows there, and then probably come back after that and do another like, headlining club tour, or if, maybe get on with somebody else. We don't really know. You know, we've been asked a couple situations. What would be an ideal situation? What would be a headlining band that would be fun for you to go out on the road with? And you think would be compatible? I think there's a lot of bands out right now that would be compatible, as long as it wasn't somebody that was too much on the, um, I don't know. Because it, there's like bands that are heavy metal bands, and there's bands that are just kind of, I don't know what you call them, a little bit more different in the, the metal rock category. It'd be great to uh, try to um, get out with another band that had a, a similar kind of, you know, aesthetic vibe right. that we've got, you know. Carpenters. Um, like Carpenters, yeah. <laughs> Don't think that's going to happen. Her, Sorry to break Captain it to you. Captain Sunil Asylum. Okay. Well, thanks again for stopping by and for playing live. Thanks, Rick. Catch uh, Stone Temple Pilots when they come to your town. I saw them live uh, last week, and they do a real good show. And right now it's time for us to play a video from Danzig, and stay tuned because later on the show I'm going to tell you about a new Danzig record that's uh, different from what Danzig's done before. Here's Danzig with How the Gods Kill. Nobody's seen this for a hundred years.